What's up, YouTube? What's up? What's up? This is Kato. I'm back. I'm back. I just made making another video for you guys. Um, I made probably about five videos so far. Um, I've been getting a bunch of people asking me for like updates on you know my progress and how well am I doing? Did things get better? How much better did they get? So you know it's been five years uh, since the recovery from withdrawals. And I still work with people and I still try to help. Um, and because I've been doing this like five years, like just helping people through the anxiety and the depression. And of course, from the caffeine withdrawals and stuff like that. Um, a lot of questions is the question that you get a lot is, you know, am I ever going to go back to being normal? Because, you know, they feel like it's never going to get better <clears throat> or they've been like, six months, seven months, eight months, and <clears throat> they're still getting um, problems with the anxiety. So <clears throat> you find yourself sometimes just constantly, you know, doubting what's going to happen next. Because, you know, like I said, anxiety, all it does is just make you fearful of your future. And it creates doubt. It, 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 it always creating doubt. And your mind is always running. And as your months go by the thoughts the running thoughts become less they they have to become less because anxiety has its time period it has a time frame it has a time where it completely deceases it goes away it doesn't come back so <clears throat> i've had some clients where they had the anxiety and it lasted a little bit longer than 2 years 3 years but what i found out was that it was due to them taking certain things they thought would help, but it was actually hindering the symptoms and making it stronger or making it uh, continue to, you know, extend the time period. Because normally when you go through anxiety, you know, you have some people that can go uh, three to six months and start recovering very, very well. But then you have some people like myself. I It literally took me uh, right over a little over a year before I fully recovered. And... With that being said, um, you know, it's it's a hard process because, of course, I didn't take any drugs. I didn't take anything to help. The only thing that I do recall taking, because the headaches were so bad at one point, I do recall taking uh, like Advil or I was taking the uh, Aleve because it didn't have caffeine in it. And for those who don't know, Tylenol has uh, uh, some substance of caffeine in it. If you look into what Tylenol is made of and then look what that is. Uh, consisted of and then you'll narrow it down and realize that it does have caffeine in it so what I was using was a leave and sometimes Advil to kind of help with the headaches but sometimes the, the, the medicine do doesn't even work um, the other thing that I'm going to hit on because I get this a lot I get people always asking you know the, from day to day you know I'm feeling like this today I just feel like I got the blues I feel like I'm just down well anxiety is going to give you that it's going to give you those symptoms of depression and that's going to be periodic throughout your process. You know, periodically, you're going to have like little low spots, uh, you know. And what I hate the most is the roller coaster ride. It's like the days when you really feel good. And the next day, it's like you're off again. You just feel like you're back in that same dark spot again. But it's all recovery. It doesn't, it, it's, it's not a lifetime thing. I've, I've repeated this a hundred times. And although the symptoms will make you feel like you're losing your mind, I can't keep my thoughts together. I'm focusing too much on certain things. Uh, with this COVID that's going on, of course, everybody that's going through anxiety is going to feel like they got it because some of the symptoms are similar to what anxiety does because anxiety will make you feel like you have flu-like symptoms. So, of course, you know, you're going to think you got it, you know, and, and you're going to think the worst of the worst. I just, I'm just glad that I'm not experiencing anxiety in this time because I think it would have been very, very hard for me because it, you know, it already makes you feel like you're not going to live. It always, it makes you feel like you're going to die. You know, you constantly, constantly have the ideal of cancer, you know, or your extremities or, you know, something wrong with your extremities, you something wrong with your, your toes, something wrong with your hands, you know, the, my nails look funny, my teeth, my eyes look funny, I get dots in my head, all my hair falling out. We get all these little panic because we're hypersensitive 
by everything. And that's what anxiety does. Um, from the aches, the body aches, the the popping in the head, the brain popping, the, the what they call like the, um, uh, it's like a zaps, like brain zaps going off in your head. You know, the, the head pressure in your front, the migraine headaches, man, it's freaking horrible. Um, but I can tell you this, guys. If you have to look at this video every day, you just do it. Because I'm going to tell you, the positive affirmation that you get from watching positive videos, it gives you some hope. And it's, it's it'll be a temporary feeling because you feel good to know that you're not by yourself. And you feel like, hey, Kato gone through it. Kato been through it. So, you know, it, it, I should be able to get through this. It, you will. You will. I mean, today you might feel like shit. Because you really feel like something's wrong with you. And nobody can connect with you. Nobody. Your family, your mom, your dad, your sisters and brothers. Nobody can connect to you. You're constantly, constantly on the internet trying to find some type of healing process. Um, you can't go outdoors. You, you, you know, you're petrified. Uh, you can't talk to your friends like you used to. Um, you know, I know, I know exactly what you're going through. But you have to believe and know that you're going to get better. It's just going to take a little time. It... it Everybody that I've spoken to, and I can tell you right now, I don't. I, I used to keep up with a list of people, but I can tell you this, just so you can know the, the amount of people I have spoken to. Um, and 2018, which in 2015 is when I went through my withdrawals, by 2018 I had already spoken to over 1,500 people. 1,500. Can you imagine? Just two years after my withdrawals had went away, I was trying to help people. Now, it is 2020 now, right? And remember, the same activity of, of, of responses from the people that read my my face, uh, my uh, YouTube and look at my videos and reach out to me. Remember, that has went up. So if I was around 1,500 people at that time that I was speaking to, I can promise you, it, I would probably guess I made over 3,000 people I literally had conversation with. Well... I ain't gonna say three thousand, at least over two thousand that I had conversation with. The the others maybe responding and 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 saying a few uh, words of, of wisdom to try to encourage them that they're gonna be okay. But to say the least, everybody that I've spoken with recovered. I I probably met maybe three, maybe less than five people that I've actually spoken to that actually said that the anxiety lasted longer than that. And when I started getting deep into what was going on, because I was like, man, that's weird because everybody I've spoken with, they say like some between nine and 13, 14 months, they really kind of get off on their own mentally. So when I start asking questions, come to find out the things they, they were eating, the things that they were doing um, was the reason why it was extending. And people think, well, still drinking a little tea. Like they say, they, they drink tea, like like dumbass. Tea it has caffeine in it. It has caffeine in it. Decaf is still caffeine in it. It still has caffeine. Like what do y'all not get? It has caffeine in it. It's if it has caffeine in it, and you still drinking tea to try to help calm yourself down, you actually making it worse. You're never gonna get rested. So yeah, you paid the way of extending your symptoms. What you should be doing every day is drinking plenty of water. I can't tell you how to eat because some of you guys eat the way you eat. You're probably not in the most health plan, the most healthiest way of eating or having good eating habits. I can't speak for everybody. But of course, I didn't drink. I don't drink juices. I don't drink. Um, I don't drink alcohol. I don't smoke. I um, I I don't eat ice cream. I, I probably ate ice cream maybe maybe three times my entire life. I'm not into. I don't eat ice cream. I hate ice cream, and I don't eat cake. So I'm not a sweet. I'm not a sweet freak type of person. I'm not into the, the the junk food like that. But for the most part, like I said, I do take care of myself. I go to the gym. Um, another thing that you have to remember is going to the gym during anxiety is not always good either because um, anxiety. Um, it, uh, it, uh, it fluctuates. It fluctuates back and forth because of your, your blood pressure. One minute your blood pressure is higher, a little bit lower, because of the adrenaline in your bloodstream. And so sometimes you may 
get active or want to be active and your body is re restraining you from it because the blood pressure might be too low or your blood pressure might be too high. So you get these little very, very like eat like these little surges like they you know everybody know what the anxiety surge is i mean because you can feel it but because of the blood flow um that adrenaline is in your blood it can be rushing to your through your body so quickly and all of a, all of a sudden you start feeling off again you start feeling a little weird and so um what i would recommend is probably do like a jog like you're jogging pacing um and then maybe do like a half a mile a day or to maybe up to a mile. You don't have to exert yourself. Just enough to get your, um, a little sweat. And and uh, like I said, you're going to have the difficulties of sleeping, uh, insomnia, you know, or just um, can't shut down. Um, but you have to fight to, to, to get into a routine. And the best way to, to get into a good routine is trying to go to bed early, like around 8, 30, 9 o'clock, force yourself. And, of course, you might wake up many nights in the middle of the night, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, like it's routine. And you're like, why am I waking up so early in the morning? And I can't go back to sleep until it's time for me to either go to work or get back up. So you, it's going to take time. I mean, that shit is it's just not going to just overnight just go away. It's just going to take some time. But, again, all of the people that I've spoken with. So if I say 2,000 people, at least 1,995 of them have literally came out of anxiety right at a year, a little bit, maybe a little bit past a year. Because it took me roughly, honestly, it took me about 15 months, 14 months before I was completely normal. Now, around the 11th and 13th month, I can actually say I was getting, I was I was feeling myself. Like I was getting excited a little bit more about life. I was being able to see purpose again. Um, because it takes that away from you but you get little moments you get little little it's the light at the end of the tunnel you start getting a little feel good every now and then around that 11 and 12 month you start getting a little bit more extended time of feeling good and then when you start feeling off again sometimes you slide into a little depression because you're more disappointed by the fact that you don't feel ex as good as you want so you get down and you do feel down because you you can't blend with society so that will happen but again remember it's temporary. It's temporary. I can answer your question right now, and three days later, you're going to call me and ask me the same thing again. I can promise you, you ask me the same thing again. Next week, you're going to question and ask the same thing again because you just want the reassurance. So when I tell you guys that you're going to be fine, you have to trust my word on it. And a lot, like I said, people are not really studying how bad this, this caffeine withdrawal stuff is. It's horrible. Um, it's it's It's... To me, it's just like any other drug that's illegal. You know, this stuff does something to you mentally. And the people that go to that Starbucks, man, um, God rest their soul, cause, but they're going to suffer greatly because they cannot go without caffeine. And the day caffeine doesn't exist or not, uh, not able to get um, get to it, people going to lose their mind. And they will. But anyway, you know, I just made this video because I just want a lot of you guys to know that I'm still around, but I'm starting to kind of, you know, wing myself off a little bit for making as many videos and um, diving too much into the caffeine because I get exhausted. I do because I talk with so many people. And again, you can read in my comments or you can even look on the front of my post. Like, I don't ask for nothing. I don't ask nobody for money. I'm not asking for no donation or nothing. I do it because I love helping people. That's why I do it. I love helping people. There's no cost to communicating with me. But sometimes I get exhausted because I do work um, and I'm still an active father to my kids. And so I have stuff that I have to do and sometimes I can't get to everybody and I get a lot of inboxes. I mean, in the last two weeks, I got a total of 100 and something inboxes and I only can respond to maybe three or four people because it gets overwhelming. But some people's stories seem to be just as great as others. And I try to, man, I wish I had help. To help everybody but all i can do now is just make another video to try to help secure those thoughts that you're having and concerns but if you feel off and not like you used to feel and you don't feel normal like you used to feel that's because you have anxiety you know something's wrong with you and you know something's not right in your head you know that 
And because there's something going on in your head and you can't figure it out, just remember that it is anxiety. You're not going crazy. It's going to make you feel like that. And see, some of this is for some some of us, this is our first time experiencing stuff like this. So we don't get it because we never had mental Ill, illness. We never had a mental illness. And all of a sudden now we're going through these trials and we wonder like, OK, is it, you know, was it coming? You know, did I, was this going to happen to me when I get older or whatever? Where did it come from? Should I get closer to God? Should I start going to church? That's not going to save you. It's not going to help you. Uh, anxiety has a time frame. It has a it has a, a day where it decides it doesn't want to deal with you no more. And I, all I can tell you is you just have to go through the motion or continue to look at this video. Every time you start feeling sad and feeling down, you can look at this video and say, well, you know what? This is what Cato said. Cato said that, hey, it's not going to last long. It's not going to be forever. OK, in the beginning, when I started doing videos, I wasn't being as truthful about it because I didn't want to tell people it took that long. It took a year before you actually got better, because if, if you tell somebody within the first month or so that it's going to take a year which means that first time the first beginning of that month the first month the first three months is horrible and a person think it's going to take a year for to get past that they're going to give up they're going to want to take drugs because nobody wants to deal with that shit that shit comes hard in the beginning so i'm just putting it out here because like i said this is probably the last video i'll make in referencing to the, the caffeine because i do have a few of them out there to answer questions and and and, and on concerns and stuff like that but, you know, it's almost like I'm in repeat mode because every time I talk to people, I have to repeat over and over. And I do get exhausted. But the, 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 but the passion for it is still there, you know, because I, I love helping people. I love to hear that they got better, you know, because, you know, and, and down the line, I always say, man, when I travel, because I know people all over the, the country because I talk to so many people, New York, New Jersey, Utah, South Dakota, North Dakota, Virginia, Carol North Carolina. Florida, like I dealt with so many people. It's like, man, you know what? If I ever have to travel out of town, I always got people that that look out for me because I looked out for them. So it's it's a it's a blessing, you know. That's that's kind of like how I look at the payback, you know, because people always say, hey, man, when you come out here, man, let me know, I'm gonna take care of you. So, um, and 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 I appreciate that. So anyway, if you guys got any questions concerning, I hope that I answered it. But all of the things that you feel right now, they're they're anxiety. If you feel off, you got depression, you start, you're scared, you know, you're thinking catastrophic stuff. You're thinking, you know, I, I you don't want to be around the people that you know love you and, and people that you know that you love. You don't want to be around them anymore or you don't feel want to be close. You want to be detached from them. That's the anxiety. But the feelings will leave and they're, I mean, the feelings eventually will go away and you'll be coming back to normal again. You know, you might miss some birthdays, you might miss a Christmas. You know, you ain't going to miss it the second or third time around. You just you're going to miss one of the you're going to miss some holidays for the first time, but they're not going to repeat. You might miss it might be during the time you miss your birthday, but you're not going to miss your birthday the second time. Right. So just look at it like this. It's, it's, it's quarters to it. Every three months, you should start noticing something different. You know, the first three months is horrible. The, the, the third, the first, the second quarter is like, oh, shit. I mean, it seems like it's getting better, but it seems like it's still getting worse. And then we go to your third quarter, which will put you between six and three months. You'd be like, okay, I'm not feeling like I used to feel. I'm feeling a little bit better, you know, but I'm not all the way happy like I was. And then when that ninth and 12 month comes, then you start noticing you start getting happy. You start feeling good about some things. But that, but my full, my full recovery, honestly, my full, full recovery took me roughly right at about 14 to 15 months. But because I was actually feeling okay, even in the 12th month, I was feeling okay. But I couldn't win over. The, the happiness